All righty. Let's get started. We'll actually hit the record button. So we're starting, um, even though it, it's almost time. Got to hit the recording a little bit early, but that's okay. All right. So hopefully everybody's doing well. Uh, I just want to introduce myself. My name is Mr. Hancock. We uh, weren't able to meet last week because Monday fell on Martin Luther King Day. So hopefully everybody had a good holiday, was able to do something fun, um, and got my messages about starting the class. So um, th this class is pretty good. At, so this is personal finance. Um, this does, it's like a 0.5 credit that you have to have in what's called general financial literacy. So that takes Part of this class but this will be lesson number two just so you're aware this lesson is being recorded for learning purposes and uh as we are on the lesson here um just kind of my my expectations make sure you're following along with the nearpod lesson um well there you know that's on your phone you know whatever you can do if you can log in that's great i am putting the link right in the chat there so you have it and then also uh, you use the chat tools uh, respectfully and appropriately, and then uh, responds to the questions in questions and instruction the first time. That just helps helps us get moving through the class, so we're not sitting waiting for everybody all the time. Okay, <clears throat> before we get into the actual lesson, because I wasn't able to do it last week, and I think it's always good to review. Uh, this is your course right here. Um, pretty easy. Yeah, the upcoming things that are due are right on the side here. Uh, any recorded lessons or lessons, I will pop them right into the announcement page. What makes it a little bit easier for when you guys go and you miss the class, you can just hurry and jump in and watch it. No worries there. If we hit plan, that's going to take us to a calendar. And on the calendar here, you'll see that we have basically live class like every Monday. And then whatever we talk about in the live class will be due kind of that Friday. And usually over the weekend or Monday morning, I go and I update the grades. So if you were not able to get the recorded lesson here on Monday, um, that I, I zeroed out these five quizzes. So no worries if you're a little behind, just go back and do them. Um, it's pretty easy. I'll show you how to do those in just a second. If we kind of move through here, uh, we won't have school on the on the twentieth. I think that's for President's Day, and so that will be be off. And uh, the end of the block is the seventeenth. Okay, so you do have a little bit of time right there to make up for anything that you may miss. So if you go into content. How the how the way it is it's laid out is um, we got different units and then in each unit I have modules so for example module one and module two uh, has quizzes one through three and then four and five and that's what we went over last week at the recorded lesson that was sent out and then this week will be module one and then, or sorry, not module one, I'm sorry, module three, which is right here. So you'll have uh, quiz six and seven, and then module four, which has eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and 13, okay? So the way the class is basically laid out, and I have some students that, that basically just wanna run through it, which is great, is you go here, you have the videos, and these videos will give you a concept of uh, of something that is on about finance. Today. So like this one's like understanding the cost of living. OK, and that's something like we're going to go over today uh, a little bit. But this uh, is a Utah Tech University student um, and they kind of went over the cost of living and how it works. And then there's just a little quiz associated with. OK, and that's what your assignments are for the whole thing. So some students, they like to run through these and get them done in two or three weeks and be done with the course. Other people just want to, you know, take it week by week, which is fine. So either way, however you want to do it. 
So, okay, so let's talk about today what we're going to be doing here. So the lesson objective today is giving quizzes in the OLS, students will accurately answer multiple choice questions about how setting goals affect the personal financial, financial planning and identify uh, specific sources of income and specific employment skills with 80% accuracy across one trial. Okay, so we already talked about where you should be in the course. <clears throat> Yeah, you may think it's a lot, but it's really not that much. Like once you get into it, it it's easy. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do, and this will show you exactly kind of model what we're gonna do. Uh, we're gonna watch this video and then we're gonna have a discussion on it um, and go over a little bit of things. So here we go. And by the way, you can either Like pause this and watch it yourself because I know some people it bugs them when it lags. But if you're okay with the lagging, you know. a financial planning process involves figuring out where you'd like to be, where you are, and how to go from here to there. More formally, a financial planning process means the following. Defining goals, assessing the current situation, identifying choices, evaluating choices, choosing, assessing the resulting situation, read it. All right, so somebody's saying there's no sound. Is everybody having that issue? No, I can hear it just fine. You can hear it, so I can hear it. Okay. So some of you guys can hear it, so you may need to play it yourself or just watch the video. Redefining goals, identifying new choices, evaluating new choices, choosing, and assessing the resulting situation over and over again. Personal circumstances change and the economy changes, so your plans must be flexible enough to adapt to those changes, yet be steady enough to eventually achieve long-term goals. Defining goals. Figuring out where you want to go is a process of defining goals. You have shorter term, one to two years, intermediate, two to 10 years, and longer term goals that are quite realistic and goals that are more wishful. Setting goals is a skill that usually improves with experience. According to a popular model, to be truly useful, goals must be specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely, or smart. Short-term goals include things like saving money in an emergency fund, increasing savings, and reducing debt. Intermediate goals include things like saving for a down payment on a house, saving to buy a car with cash, paying off student loan debt, or saving for a big trip or purchase. Long-term goals include saving for retirement, paying off a house, and saving for college for your children or grandchildren. Goals change over time, and certainly over a lifetime. Whatever your goals, however, life is complicated and risky, and having a plan and a method to reach your goals increases the odds of doing so. For example, after graduating from college, Alice has an immediate focus on earning income to provide for living expenses and debt from student loan obligations. Within the next decade, she foresees having a family. If so, she will want to purchase a house and perhaps start saving for her children's education. Her income will have to provide for her increased expenses and also generate a surplus that can be saved to accumulate these assets. In the long term, she will want to be able to retire and derive all her income from her accumulated assets and perhaps travel around the world in a sailboat. She will have to have accumulated enough assets to provide for her retirement income and for the travel. All right, so I like how the cats were with her on the sailboat, even at the very end. <laughs> so, with goal setting, there is a lot that needs to be thought about, right? So, really, overall, I mean, what do we all want? I think we all can agree that we all want to be, like, financially secure and not have to worry about money. Um, but there, there's some barriers and things change all the time right so as of right now what are some goals that you've set for yourself you guys want to put those in the ear pod you put them in the chat i guess shout them out too 
what, what are some goals you've set for yourself? Um, well, after I graduate high school, I want to uh, go into computer programming as like a career. Wonderful. Yeah, I like that goal. That's great. And, it, and I don't know if you've research the market of that like computer programming and that kind of stuff so you gotta think of like education that you gotta have um how much will you make there right will it be yeah my uncle with it? my uncle has given me a lot of that information um he uh he's been doing that for like 30 years so he's able to help me out with a lot of that stuff perfect yeah so you just want to be make sure you have all that stuff all right so some people is like graduate okay very good so that, that's a good step in the right direction. Then you got to think, okay, where do I go from there, right? Work, <clears throat> work and save money for things you need, okay? Learn more coding, okay? And what, what's that coding going to get you, right? What's your end goal with coding? Is it just for fun or is it is there some something you want to think there, right? Save for college, get a job, have a family. Okay, yep, there's a lot of things. Families are expensive. I, Usually my first thing, I kind of tell you a little bit about myself, but I'll tell you now. So I'm married and I got three little kids and uh, yeah, they cost a bunch, right? Especially their teeth. I go to the dentist way too much. I've got so many cavities. So those are some things you got to think about, right? You got to prepare for, learn all of these different advantages that you, you have to take because it get, can get complicated at times. All right, so somebody said save up enough money to move out. Okay, that's good. Become independent. Work on being a better musician, songwriter. Okay, very good. You got to think of how can I make money that way, right? Do what you want to do and make money. So, all right, let's move on. Okay, so thinking about what are some short-term financial go goals that you have, okay? Or hold on, let me go back real quick so some short-term financial goals what do you guys have any short-term financial goals you want to shout out or put in the chat uh, finish paying off uh, my car and hopefully move out there you go i like those ones I'm trying to think of some short-term financial goals i i have a car that i'm hopefully going to be paying off this year I got way too many vehicles, so yeah. <laughs> so I got a car I'm hoping to pay off. Um, that's probably one of my short-term goals. All of mine right now, I think I feel like are long-term goals because I'm really looking for retirement, that kind of stuff. I'm not that old, but I got to plan it. You got to plan early, right? Okay, let's watch the next video. And uh, just another variable to kind of consider as uh, as you're doing there. Somebody said save up for a car. That's Definitely, you want to get some money down, right? Especially with interest rates the way they are. Okay, here we go. What is the cost of living? Cost of living is the amount of money needed to sustain a certain level of living, including basic expenses such as housing, food, taxes, and health care. Cost of living is often used to compare how expensive it is to live in one city versus another. Cost of living is tied to wages as salary levels are measured against expenses required to maintain a basic standard of living throughout specific geographic regions. Cost of living can be a significant factor in the personal wealth accumulation because a smaller salary can go further in a city where it doesn't cost a lot to get by while a large salary can seem insufficient in an expensive city. According to Mercer's 2015 Cost of Living Survey, cities with the highest cost of living standards included Tokyo, Osaka, Moscow, Geneva, Hong Kong, Zurich, Copenhagen, and New York City. U.S. cities with a high cost of living as of 2015 included Honolulu, Los Angeles, Washington, D.C., and San Francisco. A cost of living index compares the cost of living in a major city as compared to the corresponding metropolitan area. The index incorporates the expense of various components that comprise basic human needs, creating an aggregate measure to which new entrants into the workforce may refer. As college graduates weigh employment alternatives and currently employed job seekers consider relocation, 
the index provides an informative snapshot of rental, transportation, and grocery costs. In 2016, using New York City as a benchmark for other U.S. cities, San Francisco maintains the highest cost of living in the Americas. Rental costs in San Francisco are about 3% higher than in New York, and food prices sit 22% above corresponding levels found in New York. By contrast, the citizens of Reno, Nevada enjoy a cost of living approximately 43% below that of New York residents when analyzing basic expenses on an aggregate basis. For a family with two adults and two children, the average cost of living in the United States hovered around $65,000 per year in 2015. The figure does exclude discretionary spending on non-essential goods and services, such as leisure, entertainment, and luxury items. The debate over raising the U.S. federal minimum wage is deeply rooted in the disparity between the lowest wage allowed by law and the earnings needed to maintain an adequate cost of living. Proponents of a minimum wage hike found that productivity levels of workers increased since 1968 as unequally correlated to the minimum hourly rate of pay in 2012. As the minimum wage once tracked the increase in productivity, the divergence between earnings and worker efficiency have reached historically disproportionate levels. By contrast, opponents of a minimum wage increase contend that a raise could spur higher consumer prices as employers offset rising labor costs. All right, so that was a lot of information they threw out there and hard words like aggregate and stuff like that. Let me try to put this in more simple terms for everybody real quick. A lot of you guys, your goals that you want to do for short-term goals was to move out of the house, right? Who wanted to move out of the house? The I did. I, my, my daughter's 10 years old and she's already talking about moving out of the, my house. So I guess my rule, my, my house is too bad, I guess. I don't know. She doesn't like the rules <laughs> or something. Okay. So you got to consider cost of living. Okay. How much does it, how much is rent? How much is all that kind of stuff? Okay. So we're going to check out this website. Okay. This website is called nerd wallet. Dot com cost of living calculator. I'm going to put this in the chat here. If you can't look it up, that's okay. Cause you're on your phone or whatever. But, um, if you look at, let's, let's, let's say Salt Lake city. Okay. So you can put in where you maybe want to move to. I, uh, I always think like, I, ah, man, I want to move somewhere warm, but Okay, so this is comparing two cities, right? Or you can compare like even cities with anything like, 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 okay, maybe this is better. Okay, so I live in the Ogden area. Okay, so I'm gonna say Ogden, Utah, and let's say I want to move down to uh, Saint George. Let me have Saint George. Yep, Saint George, Utah. Okay, so it is more expensive so let's say i made a hundred thousand dollars a year household income okay um it is more expensive to live in saint george than it is in ogden okay it's three percent higher in in costs for for housing okay but it's lower in cost for transportation higher in cost for food there lower in cost for entertainment and lower in cost for healthcare. But overall it is, was 3%, was it 3% higher? Oh, 0% lower than St. George. So it's actually fairly even. Okay. But some things are higher and some things are, are, are not, not as high. Okay. So it's something you need to consider. So let's say, you know, you want to, and I can tell you actually where the, the cheapest places to live are so in the United States. So if we were to go to Ogden, and if you want to move to, I'll tell you a really, really cheap place to live, Tennessee. Okay. So Tennessee, if I were to move to Tennessee, 
I would only need to make $84,337 a year to have the same lifestyle if I were to make $100,000 there, right? So everything's lower. We got uh, housing costs, transportation, food, everything like that, okay? So it's something you really need to consider when you're looking at things. So th like this, so a two bedroom apartment rental is almost $1,300 a month and it's only $866 a month in Knoxville, Tennessee. Okay. So you need to think about where you live. Are you going to be able to live with what you, you make and live that kind of lifestyle? Okay. So I want everybody to look at this nerd wallet real quick. And I want you to put in like kind of the currency. It doesn't have every city. In Utah, it only has like Cedar City, Ogden. Provo, Orem, Salt Lake, or St. George. So whatever the closest one is to you, okay? And then put some place you want, you'd like to live in the United States. It's maybe different. I, I've i always wanted to <clears throat> move to Florida. I'm going to be honest with you. Because I like the sunshine. And I can't even spell Florida, right? So there we go. Florida. And I want to live on the beach. So it's going to have to be like... Miami, right? So if I want to move there, I'm going to have to make more money when I move there. Because it's about 21,000 higher. So look that up because in the next slide over here, I want you to uh, put where, <clears throat> where did you want to move to and was that the cost higher or lower? So let, let's hear some of your got what you guys have researched a little bit. Well, I, I, I couldn't open it because I would have to leave class and then I would have to log back in and it would take like 10 minutes just to do all that. No, no problem. Yeah. Where, 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 do you, where would you want to move to? Um, probably somewhere cheaper because, you know, I don't I'm not super. um. I'm not making a ton of money right now and I want to move somewhere cheaper so I can save up so that I can go to college and stuff like that. I found an online college that my uncle gave me for the computer programming that was only 45 a month. So I'd have to apply that to my cost of living too. Oh, okay. So um, probably somewhere in, I don't know what the cheapest city to live in, in Utah is. Oh, in Utah? Yeah, <clears throat> maybe Cedar City. All of Utah is kind of a little bit the same, right? So if you want to yeah. stay in Utah, um, but there are, are some cheaper places, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, so so it is lower. The cost of living is lower in Cedar City area. Cedar City? Okay, I'll have to look that up. Yeah, you know, so th there's just some things like there because it's always nice to be able to kind of get that. All right, something happened to my screen. All right, I'm going to have to stop sharing and figure out my screen. I did something to it. <laughs> it's messing around, and then I messed up. All right, I'm going to be jumping off the Nearpod and back on so I can fix this. Ugh. All right. <clears throat> Easy fix. All right. So somebody said uh, they're going to go to Logan for college and it was higher. Okay. That's kind of interesting. Somebody put on the chat 39% higher if I want to move to Oregon. It's really pretty, but at the moment, not a good idea. Yeah. Unfortunately, I love Oregon. Like the Oregon coast, beautiful, right? I would also miss out on skiing in Utah. 
Yep. All right. Uh, I'd rather stay in Utah, West Jordan K. San Diego, California is 135% higher than Salt Lake. Yep. California is an expensive place to live. If you want a cheaper place to live, look at Texas or um, some of the southern states, as I said, like Tennessee, Georgia, you know, th those kind of places. Um, but something to consider when you're going to move, right? Cost of living. Okay. <clears throat> All right. That's going to leave us for today. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, here are my contact information. Um, remember to get those assignments done. I, I apologize. Let me see if I can pull it up over here real quick and pull it over. But um, you have modules. Uh, what was it? Module. I'll have it pulled up in just a second. Yeah. Okay. I got to get back to work. Uh, no. Have a nice day. No problem. Thanks. So remember, you just have modules. Um, I'm looking over here. Three and four that you'll need to do, which is uh, quizzes eight through 13. And then modules three is six through seven. Okay. So, and these are, are made so you can do them unlimited times. So if you didn't get as good a score as you want, you can redo them and retake them. So, okay, I'm going to stop the recording right now. But if you do have any questions, I'll be around to, to help you out.